show that helps you find the next Apple, Google, Starbucks, or company you've never heard of. But if you bought their stock early, it could have made you filthy rich. I'm your host, Andra Nescu. Today our focus is on stocks in life sciences, biotechnology, and the hunt for the next miracle drug and drug delivery system. Finding the next biggest biotech winner early can seem almost as challenging as curing cancer. So how do we know who's worth your hard-earned cash? Well, stay tuned as we look at three stocks in the biotech sector that are working hard to advance the way we help people be healthy and create a healthy return for your investment in the process. But now let's introduce our first guest. He's an independent market analyst and biotechnology expert who will help explain the biotech playing field. Welcome to the show, Mr. Nigel DeGreiter. What are the elements that are needed to develop a financially successful therapeutic drug? Well, I think the, the first and most important thing is there needs to be a market need. And by market need, I, need, I mean that we want something that's good for the patients, of course, okay. for physicians and for the payers, because right. we have these three important groups in, in uh, healthcare. The patients need to have a drug that's going to be better than, than anything else that's out there. The phy physicians need to have a drug that's going to be better for them, easier to administer, uh, easier for the patient to use, something where, where it's going to have some benefit for the physician. And of course the payers need to see an economic benefit for themselves. They right. need something that's cheaper or something that reduces costs elsewhere or somehow makes the patient better for longer. And what are some of the risks investors should uh, evaluate when looking to invest in a life science company? one of the most important things is to look around for competitors and this isn't just looking for competitors who are developing a similar drug you have to look at the whole therapeutic landscape so for for instance with heart drugs often you have companies developing a drug but there's medical device manufacturers that are going to develop something that's competing so you need to understand the whole therapeutic landscape before you can decide what's going to win there and what isn't Okay, I understand that. So in order to get that kind of information, obtain that, uh, what kind of research should they be doing? Where should they go? How do they go about doing Well, the, the internet is your, is your first stop. The best, the best uh, idea is to start searching for the disease rather than the drug itself. That way you can find out what are, what are physicians thinking in terms of treatment and, and what's up and coming in terms of, of treatment. That way you can get an idea of what's going on in the whole space and you can see how the new drug will will interact with everything else. Um, so for the average investor, would it be a good idea to invest in life science companies? Should they do this? Well, I think that life sciences is something that an investor uh, really can't ignore anymore. Um, if you look at it in terms of GDP, 16% of US GDP is spent on health care. In Canada, that's 11%. It's 11% in, in the Netherlands. Right. Um, if you look at uh, the United Kingdom, Japan, it's 9%. So this is a large chunk of the economy. Right. I think it's something that investors can't afford to miss. At the same time, it's a very difficult area because there is a lot of science involved. And so unless an investor is willing to do the, the research and find out what's going on in healthcare, it's very difficult for an investor to make an intelligent decision. And at that point, perhaps it's better for an investor to invest in a fund where you have portfolio managers who will do that research, who are experts in, in the area, and will pick and choose stocks, and you get a, an exposure to a much greater range. So any one stock not doing very well doesn't have as big an impact on your portfolio. Okay. And do you believe that liquidity is a problem in the Canadian market for life science companies? Well, that's an interesting question. That that. I'd give both a yes and a no answer to. Uh, from a corporate point of view, liquidity is currently an issue. Uh, most companies in Canada are running with about a year's worth of money on, on the books. Right. So they're always looking for how am I going to bring in more cash to advance my program further. From an investor point of view, for trading stocks, um, there is an impression that the stocks aren't very liquid. However, when you go and you, you start analyzing how the stocks trade, mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis, they may trade only a handful of shares, a, a few thousand dollars. But when there's an event, when a clinical trial happens, when management changes, when, when something happens in the stock that you'd want to, tr you'd want to trade on that information, mm -hmm. the stocks do trade with, with sufficient liquidity that an individual investor can, can buy and sell. 
What is uh, the toughest challenge facing Canadian life science companies today? I think the biggest challenge from a corporate point of view is actually funding. Um, typical life science companies run for many years with negative cash flow. They need to replenish their their balance sheets to keep operating. Um, as I mentioned, right. uh, quite a lot of them are running with about a year's worth of cash and they, they really need two, three years worth of cash at a time. Um, there is funding available. There's venture capital in Canada. Uh, you can list your, your shares on the Toronto Stock Exchange or on any other exchange. But it's still in getting investors to have interest in the life sciences right. area is still a bit of a challenge and it's most of the companies are having a great amount of difficulty raising that money uh, to the point where some of them are actually leaving the country to find that funding. Okay, thank you so much. We're going to take a quick break right now, but when we get back, we'll hear from three biotech companies who will try to convince you that their stock is the next biggest winner.